Okay, good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the meeting of February 5th, 2015, to order. And roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Garapala. Here. Council Members Evans. Long. Here. Jefferson. Yes. And Mayor Cisliano. Here. Everybody, please rise for a pledge of allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of solemn prayer there. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for a moment of solemn prayer. Thank you. Notice requirement of the Open Public Meeting Act for this meeting has been satisfied. A copy of the annual meeting notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the poster, posted in town hall and filed in the office of the municipal clerk on December 30, 2014. There are two emergency exits on the wall. One to my right will take you out to the front of the building. Another to my left will take you out to the rear parking lot. All cell phones must be turned off. If you need to make a call, kind of make your call outside the meeting room. Uh, before we get going with our, again, me, I'm going to start with a council report. Just take a second. I'm going to start down with Mr. Deputy Mayor Garofalo. You have a report for us? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you know, uh, over the last couple of weeks, the Finance Committee, which consists of you and myself, uh, have met several times with uh, our CFO and our administrator. And we had our final budget workshop this evening, and I am real confident to say that next month we will be introducing a budget with no increase in the tax levy from last year. Uh, that means that um, the amount of money we raised through taxation last year will be the same this year, which is uh, something that we've strived for. Um, you've heard me say this a thousand times. We've weathered the storm. We've gotten through the recession. We've got through Sandy. Um, and looking forward, uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue this. Uh, we were able to do it um, for a lot of little reasons, but I just want to point two things out. Um, one, again, because of the um, great management of our funds and our budgets through our CFO and our administrator, we were able to receive a AA plus rating on our bonds, which drastically reduced the amount of interest we have to pay uh, for the money that we borrow. But the second thing that I think that's, that's really incredible, and I have to really give credit to, again, Andrew and our CFO and also our township employees, um, across the state, health benefit premiums have gone up 12.3%. This year, our budget for health benefits will go up 0%. And that's because of some innovative programs um, that we have instituted again, uh, through our administrator and our CFO, and also that our employees have bought into it, that, that, that they're getting now the proper level of, of health benefits that really makes sense for them, for their families, if they're single, um, and have reduced the amount of premiums uh, uh, drastically. So those two items alone, where other, where other towns are seeing four and $500,000 increases in their budget for health benefits this year, we will be flat, and that also helped us bring in a flat tax levy. Um, we will be introducing the budget in March. There will be a um, presentation. I hope you all come to see uh, uh, exactly how, your, how the tax money comes in and how we spend it um, and how prudently we spend it. Um, so that's basically it. Great. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilman Shepika, you have a report for us tonight? Yes, I do. I would like to talk again about St. Patrick's Day. It's, we started St. Patrick's Day in 1993. Uh, with the Community Celebration Committee and uh, the president of the Community Celebration Committee, which was formed just to do special events, was Mary Pat Napolitano at the time. And then we've had St. Patrick's Day every year except for 2002, where we had a spring dance, in 2003, where we had a night of comedy, and in 2004, where we had a, um, a Hawaiian luau, which many people dressed in Hawaiian attire. It was really a fun night. All these events helped to raise the money for a Memorial Day Parade and Fourth of July fireworks. And again, I'm pleading for a lot of people to come out and help support this so that we do and will be able to have our Memorial Day Parade back again. 
Um, this year our um, St. Patrick's Day Gala will be on Friday, March 13th. It's going to be at the Renaissance Room in Wanamassa. Doors open at 6.30. We'll have an hour of hors d'oeuvres with entertainment provided by Saxman Dan. Um, he does a fabulous job of getting everyone to dance while he's playing the saxophone to entertain us. This year, unfortunately, um, the Peter Smith School of Irish Dance, Peter Smith has passed away and his company has um, since folded. Uh, but this year I found the Heritage Irish, Dan Heritage Irish Dance Company from Middletown and they will be here to entertain us at 7.30. And right after the show, we will have a buffet of corned beef, cabbage, potatoes, carrots, Joey Falco will do a delicious sauce for our green shamrock raviolis that we have. And he also will be, be making penne alla vodka and uh, chicken franchise for those who do not eat corned beef. And the best tasting Irish bread comes from Wegmans and of course their delicious rye bread, I'm sorry, Irish soda bread comes from Wegmans and the delicious rye bread also does. As you can see, we have many offerings for people who do not eat meat on Friday during Lent. In the past, we have always had to receive a dispensation from our local priest for this fundraiser, and we're working on trying to get one again this year. After dinner, we will introduce our two, two 2015 honorees, the, and they will be the Board of Education President, Denise Palamas, and our Councilman, uh, Mike Evans. The Community uh, Celebration Committee is proud to honor both Denise and Mike for their many hours of volunteering uh, their time to Ocean Township. Being a member of council, I know the importance of volunteering in Ocean Township. After we do this special presentation, we will have dessert and then we'll announce the winners of our basket raffle and also our 50-50 raffle. And again, um, uh, Food Town and hopefully Wegmans will be um, donating the food for us like they have in the past 22 years. And all this dinner and all this food and entertainment you get for twenty dollars a person. Wow! And um, uh, you can either see myself or you can see Rachel. And we will also have um, soda and beer and wine. Awesome! Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Rich, I put Rich to work about three weeks ago since <laughs> we swore him in, and he's been on the job working ever since. Ever. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I do have something to report. Uh, our last council meeting, I talked about the fact that we're getting involved with the Grow Mammoth program, which is uh, under the direction of uh, uh, Amy Fitzgerald uh, for the county and uh, Freeholder Tom Arnone. And since that time, I've had conversations with uh, Tom Arnone. Uh, we wanted to try to meet as early as possible with our business uh, community members so that they could uh, share any concerns. Uh, with us at that business roundtable uh, and at the same time we were going to try to provide solutions uh, to those concerns uh, we've uh, we're trying to advance this as quickly as we can but what's happened is because of the snow and the bad weather Tom Arnone who's the freeholder who's spearheading this effort he's had his schedule changed a number of times so we're actually going to meet with him tentatively on Tuesday May the 5th, and I'm making the assumption that this that meeting will be held uh, for our business roundtable for the Township of Ocean here in this uh, room. So I think it's going to benefit uh, our business community members as well as the uh, Township uh, citizens in general. And I will be reporting back to you periodically, Mayor, and to the other members of the Council uh, regarding uh, our efforts uh, uh, relative to this business roundtable. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Before we go to Angel and Mori, I'll just add to it. Um, also, you'll see on the agenda tonight we have for a resolution. We're moving ahead with our property tax rebate program, so we have a resolution pushing that forward. And this is a program which I've been after for a while. We're introducing. It's going to actually help take uh, property tax dollars or put money right back in your pocket, take uh, money right off your property tax by shopping in Ocean Township. We're coming up with a program where you'll get a little credit card. Every time you use it in Ocean Township, you'll get a percentage that goes right back to your property tax. So just a way of trying to put money back into your pocket from us to you. So you help us, you help the businesses, you help yourself. It's just a great program. So we're getting that started. The resolution is being passed tonight. From there, we'll go to the next step. With that, Andrew, you have anything? Just one quick thing. I was over at the Cedar Center today, and Cedar started to put the siding on the building, and really 
Hopefully we're going to have that finished up in about the next 30 days. Great. So we'll It's coming along. Yeah. It is. Great. Marty? Well, just one thing. Uh, I was very excited to see that we're honoring the Ocean Township High School tennis team. It was the first because my daughter played on that team. And then I realized that was almost 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Reality now I feel old and depressed. <laughs> so without any further ado we're going to come down we do have some honorees here tonight we also have uh, besides the girls tennis team which you guys had a great year we have also a township business here short cake supply celebrating the first anniversary but having a great success and what a great story that is as well so we're going to get to the girls first and then we're going to do the short cake supply so stay right there until we come down so we don't have a coach here tonight, right? No? So I just want to, uh, I'm going to call you guys up one at a time. When we call you, stay up here. And then we're going to ask you a little bit about your year, okay? I want somebody to be the spokesman. Who's that going to be? Because <laughs> I know, well, I know this, and help me out. You were B, B North champs, right? And you also made it to the States. You qualified for the States this year? All right, awesome. Now, how far did you go? Did you get to the finals, semifinals? The States were in the finals. You were? Yeah. Outstanding. Oh, that is great. All right, so I'm going to call you guys up. You stay up here. We're going to pick your brain a little bit about it. So, coaches in here, it was an outstanding year. So, as we call you, come right on up. How about Karen Morgan? Karen, you here? Congratulations. Good job. Get over here, Karen. I'm going to need you. Okay, Anna Orofsky, right? Did I get it right? A lot. A lot, I'm sorry. I got this. All right, Victoria Nickel. All right. <laughs> Julia Homer. Okay. And Julia Barras. Good job. All right, Nicole Jenks. She's sick. Sick? Okay. Oh, sorry. Emily Eister. Good job, Em. Natalie Fisher. I'm sure I'm kind of split out this side, too, when we even it out. Don't buy me. We get you on frame too. Right? These meetings are televised, so you're on TV, so smile. All right, Juliana Yost. Juliana. Kristen Sicaria. Kylie Katz. Great. So. Girls, come, come on in a little tighter here. We're going to get a little shot here. Excuse So these are B North champs. You guys, I'm sure you had a, a couple of bumps in the road on the way there, but you came through, right? You didn't go when I feed it, or did you? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost on the feed. No, like a couple of Wait, we should always think about the mouse that we're going to do. Smile. Yeah. <laughs> One more. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Anyway, girls, great year. Congratulations. We're glad that you guys were able to do that. And listen, B North Champs, that's something. We had a lot of tough competition in B North. I know the schools that you were up against. But you did a great job. So let's hear from you guys again. Who's the team that knocked you off? 
Princeton. Princeton. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a college team. <laughs> well, great job to you. So next we have a nice story here. We have a business here, Shortcake. And I was there at the grand opening. Was that a year ago? Well, yeah. That's unbelievable. Oh unbelievable. But that was great. And this is a great story because uh, Jen went through this, uh, Brookdale Community College had this entrepreneur's certificate program, right? Yep. He took advantage of that, and that was in the summer of 2013. And it taught you some of the basics of starting a new business, and with the help of that, you were able to obtain a business loan, open a store, and go through the whole process. And it's got to be a daunting project, just going A to Z and not knowing what's going to happen, <laughs> how are you going to do this and facilitate it. But you had a lot of confidence in yourself, and I guess in your abilities, because it really worked out. So we're really honored to give this to you, this award. So without any further ado, please come on up and tell us a little bit about what you did. So, Jen, we have all the nice things we're saying here about you and about your store and all that. I'm going to let you take that home. But give us your spin on how Glenn specialty stores um, the closest one is an hour away yeah. so I found that there was a need and I uh, just did tons and tons of homework attended the certificate program for Brookdale that helped a lot, right? it helped a lot yeah. it um, just really teaches you some of the important steps that you need to well, take to open a business and make it successful because it's easy to open a business but to yeah. be open for a year or longer is not the, always so easy so um, but we're, we're thriving we're growing we have lots of new technology and some of the cool things that we're doing in the store, I actually brought you um, oh, a gift. Cool. <laughs> 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 we, um, we have a 3D printer. I could have brought cupcakes for the <laughs> point. Yeah. I thought about that. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're so thinking short cake supply. We're in this here. <laughs> right. Maybe it's going to be good. So we actually um, we have a 3D printer and we oh, custom make cookie cutters mm -hmm. and we also custom make like, make images and different things you can use in all oh, your for cool. any person to make. So we printed um, a Monmouth County cookie cutter oh, that's cool. yeah, <laughs> for you to take and enjoy. I'm give that to Lisa. She's gonna have hours of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, my fiance, loves to bake. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And we're, I'm just really really grateful to be here at Ocean and get the support that I've had. I've looked at a lot of locations before I settled on its little gem, and I'm very, very happy that's to be on Sunset Avenue. Well, we're glad to have you, and I think thank that's wonderful. Thank you. And thanks. Awesome. It's been, it was a year ago. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you haven't been to Jen's shop, it's on Sunset Avenue, and it's really yes. very interesting to go in there, <laughs> and uh, they've got every baking supply thank you can think of. Thank you. Yeah. And we do classes and parties. Well, to the classes. <laughs> nice parties. Actually, our yeah. township manager, Andrew, brought his children in there. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yes, he does. He kind of looks familiar, but it's well, again, thank you guys very much. At this time, we're going to move to our business portion. You girls are welcome to stay and get a civic lesson and see how operations are run here in town. Or we'll take a quick recess and we'll let you Okay. Homework, right? Homework. <laughs> you might have another excuse like homework or something. Yeah. Be smart. Go with you. Congratulations. That's nice. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Just another quick announcement, folks. Before you come up to make any comments, we don't have a microphone. We're in the process of going through our equipment and, and revamping it. So when you come up, kind of stand almost in front of the second chair, if you will, and speak up if you don't mind so we can pick you up also on the camera plus up here on the dais. So tonight, the purpose of this public portion is to solely ask questions to understand resolutions that appear on this agenda. All questions not related to an item on this agenda should be asked during the public comments portion at the conclusion of the meeting. Anybody have anything on resolutions? Come on up, please. Anybody? No? Sent to Jenny? Come on up, Brian. Sure. I can ask questions besides anything on the agenda, right? At the end. Yeah, and this is just anything on the consent agenda. Yeah, sure, sure. Sure. On anything on the agenda, sure. Oh, okay, I know I got to do it once. Sure. <laughs> Just speak up, Brian. Uh, state your name and address again if you don't mind. No, no, this was uh, Mr. Stubbs. I just I pulled it last month because there was another appointment attached to it, and so. We weren't ready to so there's no openings on the sewage. No, program. there is not. No. Okay. You. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yeah. Tonight we have the consent agenda. Yeah. Let's that. With resolutions 15031 to 15034. And the minutes from January 7th, 2015 and January 22nd, 2015. Someone please offer. Offer. Second. Oh, second. Deputy Mayor Garapella. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Cisiano. Yes. And then we have resolutions 15031. Approve the release of various 2015 closed session minutes. Someone please offer. Offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Garapella. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Cisiano. Yes. 15032. Authorized fireworks display by Deal Gotham Country Club for June 28th. Oh, I'm sorry, geez, what am I doing? They're over time. I'm going to go back. 15035, authorize an interlocal service agreement for the dispensing of gasoline and diesel fuel with the following. A, Borough of Interlaken, B, Borough of Eleanor. Someone please offer. Offer. Second. Second. Deputy Mayor Garpella. Yes. Council Member is Long. Yes. Shepard. Yes. And Mayor Susanna. Yes. 15036, support. A property tax rewards program is part of the Township of Ocean Shop local campaign. Someone please offer. Offer. Second. Deputy Mayor Garpella. Yes. Council Member Flom. Yes. Shepard. Yes. And Mayor Sustiana. Yes. 15037. Approve the following change orders with GCS contractors. A town hall renovation project. This is actually an $8,300 $8, reduction in that change order. So I'm sure someone will offer that. Someone offer. Offer. Second. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfala. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sassiana. Yes. And B, Township of Ocean Senior Center Project. There's no change in the dollar amount. This is just a change to the material being used there. Someone please offer. Offer. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfala. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepika. Yes. And Mayor Sassiana. Yes. Uh, 15038, we're going to pull that tonight. That's going to need a little more tweaking. We're going to go right to 15039. Authorize the mayor and municipal clerk to execute a developer's agreement with Heritage Village at Oakhurst LLC. I'm going to ask before we uh, 
We don't have for Marty to give us a summary, summarize if you will. Well, not the summary, but we have some changes to that. So I just wanted to outline what those changes are. Okay. Those into the record. So in paragraph one, where it talks about a 30 percent um, proposed improvements, that's not what it's going to say. It's a performance guarantee in this total sum of eight hundred fifty-nine thousand four hundred forty dollars, ten percent, eighty-five thousand nine forty-four which shall be in cash and deposited with the township in accordance with the ordinance of the township. And the remaining 90%, 773-496, may be in the form of cash, letter of credit, or short forms on, et cetera. There's a change on page four, in paragraph six, where it's the township accepts the proposed drainage easement as satisfying condition three of the preliminary and final major site plan approval. In paragraph eight, it talks about a contribution from the township of 300,000, the term will be up to 300,000. That's the maximum we will provide. In paragraph nine, where there are two blanks, the it's 15% just has to be filled in, and that amount is $107,430. And then there'll be an insert above paragraph 10, which will be paragraph 10, and the numbers will change. And that will be the escrow um, for the strong water management shall be under separate agreement. Great. Someone please offer 15039. Offer. Second. I'll second it. Deputy Mayor Garfalla. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepard. Yes. And Mayor Sassana. Yes. Tonight we have ordinances for adoption. We have ordinance 2237. Didn't want to read the uh, an ordinance authorizing the dedication of an existing public right of way along West Park Avenue as a public street. Okay. Someone please move to open the public hearing. The ordinance. Second. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfell. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Sassiano. Yes. Anybody have anything on um, Ordinance 2237? Anybody care to be heard on it? No. no. Move to close the public hearing. hearing. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfell. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Sassiano. Yes. Action, please, on Ordinance 2237. Move Ordinance 2237. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfalo. Yes. Council Member Shepard. Uh, Long. Yes. Shepard. Yes. And Mayor Siciliano. Yes. Also tonight for adoption, we have Ordinance 2238. Would you care to read the title? An ordinance authorizing an emergency appropriation in accordance with NJSA 48-5-53B for the preparation and execution of a complete reevaluation program as ordered by the Monmouth County Board of Taxation. All right. So please open the public hearing on Ordinance 2238. Move to open the public hearing. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfalo. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Shazana. Yes. Anybody have any comments on Ordinance 2238? Seeing or hearing no one, please move to close Ordinance 22, the public hearing on Ordinance 2238. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfalo. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Shazana. Yes. Action, please, on Ordinance 2238. Move Ordinance 2238. Second. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfalo. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Sassiana. Yes. Tonight for introduction, we have Ordinance 2239. Can you read the title, please? An ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 21, the Comprehensive Land Development Ordinance for the Township of Ocean. All right, so we'll introduce Ordinance 2239. Second. Deputy Mayor Garfalo. Yes. Council Member Long. Yes. Shepherd. Yes. And Mayor Sassiana. Yes, that'll have its public hearing on the March 5th. And be published in the coaster. Anybody from the audience? You have Mayor, any? before you yes. have public comment, I think we have an announcement uh, Vinny might, uh, as the, about our website that Ms. Mrs. Oh, Hudson is oh, going to yes. be very, very happy about. <laughs> Thank you. We forgot to, uh, we we forgot forgot to mention that. I'm sorry. Well, at the last meeting, the mayor had commented that um, we were working on putting the resolutions and ordinances on the website prior to the meeting. And um, today was the first time we did do that. So go to our website, take a look at it. We're still, again, <laughs> we're, still, we're still working on some of the nuances of it. We may want to clean up some of the, the way it looks and everything, okay. but at least it's out there before the meeting and it'll give you guys information before you come. And um, we're just happy it was a long time coming and we're glad to be able to do it. What's that? I said, all we have to do is come. <laughs> That's it, and you'll be prepared when you get here. Great, thank you, man, that was great. That is a milestone and I'm glad that we brought that up. Outstanding. Okay, so at this time we're going to open up to the public. If you have something, please come on up. Floor recognizes Mr. Leverson. Please step up and state your name anyway for the record, please. Uh, Paul Leverson, 
on a Lefferson, 236 Clifford Road, Oakhurst. Um, I got a question. Um, uh, you passed some bond ordinances. Uh, you just, Mr. Lefferson, I have to ask you to speak up tonight because our microphones aren't working. We, we need to we want the camera more. to pick you up. They are in here. What, what do you want? What, what, just talk a little louder. So this way, if you can, it speak up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that camera's on here. We're televised, of course. Yeah, well, I just, that's another thing I want to bring up. So sure. Um, uh, about your paving program, I got a list from uh, Mr. Brennan today. Um, a list with the roads on it, and I noticed that you're, you're out of the uh, bond ordinance. You passed the bond ordinance, I believe, back in October for 1.9 million dollars. And I was just curious. Um, you did pave a few roads this year in the town. I think he only paved like two roads. Um, and I see now on this list that I got from him tonight that you're you're paving Wakepeka Drive from Sunset Avenue to Appleby Drive. That's a short distance. If you go the other way, the road is in bad shape. Um, and my other really big complaint is, you're taking money out of this bond. You're, you're paving these roads for the residents of our town, and you're, you're taking money out of this bond to do the parking lot. He has no idea what it's gonna cost. I figure it costed $200,000, maybe a little less. So that's gonna shortchange the residents for getting their roads paved. And my personal opinion is, I don't think you'll ever pay all these roads next year. Well, that's our program I'm going to let Andrew speak to as far as the progress. There's no way you will pay all these roads next year. Why won't we pay those roads next year? Okay, well, you paid two roads this year. Well, no, we didn't pay two roads this year. I, get, I told you before the meeting, we paved four roads last year, and we did all the Mammoth Road sidewalk, curbing, and the driveway. That, that was that was that, that was that, a significant that, project. You, but you didn't pay months. Road. You didn't pay months. We don't pay Mammoth Road. It's a county road. It's a county road. road. Just like you don't pay West Park Avenue. And that's a county road. They paved the county road because you swapped years ago. West Park Avenue used to be our road. Now you swapped it. Now we have Corley's and Sunset Avenue. So my, my question is, you, you you can you give me an estimate? What's that's going to cost? I think your estimate is in the ballpark of what's two hundred thousand dollars. But that includes drainage work. That includes the additional property that we're going to acquire that's going to have to be paved. That includes paving all the existing. So it's a that's a significant project. That includes lighting. There's a lot of things that go into that. And Brian, that is for the betterment of the public. Again, this parking lot's used for court a couple times a week, and there's overflow. You've seen it. I've seen it. Everybody here has seen it. When you come by during court, folks are looking for a place to park. Uh, listen, I agree. So, that should have been done years ago. <coughs> right. Years ago. Why, you know, why they never did that years ago? We're doing it now. I mean, I'm not worried about the alignment with Sherman Avenue. Well, I think that's the a only critical problem, part of the project. The, no, the only problem with the, with the alignment with Sherman Avenue, the only problem in the summertime is the people who come here in the summertime who use that road don't know how to drive. Pays <laughs> close. Pays close. So, yeah. That's very general, but thank you. Well, you can say it's very generally all you want. So I have no time. I have no problem getting out of here now. Okay. In the summertime. Well, this should make it easier for everybody, even yeah. folks who may have a challenge. Because driving. people who come here in the summer, who live here in the summer, have no respect for the way they drive. Right. So. My brother visits every year. He's very respectful. <laughs> I think there's no exception to that. Well, maybe you should call up uh, Mayor Blasio and talk to him about just that. Just saying, Brian. So you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, which, which, yeah, yeah. So, so. What else? Uh, anything else, Brian? Yeah, yeah, I got plenty. Okay. Um, just a couple of weeks. Just a couple of weeks. <laughs> Mr. Weldon's clock is not working. Your big, your your, your main man, Mr. Weldon's clock, is not working. Where is you that told clock? me on the 20th, yes. I told you his clock wasn't working. The clock was put up. Yes. I worked on that program with him. You should get it fixed. It right? was fixed yeah. this summer. And yeah, I know we it, worked it on it. It was fixed this summer, beginning of the summer. It was working, yeah. Yeah. and it stopped working um, right around um, uh, beginning of December. We started having problems. It works right. one day, and then another day it doesn't work. And three of the sides were working back in December. I don't know what they're working on. I, I didn't look tonight. We'll have someone look at it. Yeah. Yeah. $25,000. That's a beautiful there. clock, yes. We'll, we'll get that fixed. Plus those we'll thousand dollar out. deep benches out there, which nobody still right towards it there. <laughs> right now it's just 5 o'clock. So, um, um, 
Oh, uh, Mr. Warren, I have a question to ask you. Sure. About, uh, you said you you said you're going to be uh, as our new council person. It's such a pleasure to meet him. Uh, you said you're going to be meeting with Mr. Warren on in May mm -hmm. and, and about this uh, business. Now, what is that going to entail? Is that going to entail? Okay, I'll let you talk first. All right, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to respond to your question. Uh, Amy Fitzgerald is the uh, Director of Economic Development for Monmouth County. We're going to be meeting with Amy Fitzgerald. At the same time, we're going to be meeting with Freeholder Arnone. Freeholder Arnone is the person who has spearheaded uh, the Grow Monmouth Initiative uh, in Monmouth County. Uh, they have had a series of roundtable discussions with business owners uh, in various municipalities uh, within Monmouth County. Uh, we're going to be meeting uh, with them tentatively, and there's a reason why I say tentatively, Tuesday, May 5th, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, the details of that have to be ironed out. And one of the reasons that I realize it's February and we're not meeting with them until May, but this is a result of the very heavy schedule uh, that uh, Mr. Arnone uh, is working under. And as I mentioned at the outset when the mayor called on me earlier this evening, uh, unfortunately, because of bad weather, uh, Mr. Arnone's uh, business roundtables in some communities uh, had to be postponed. They couldn't be held. Uh, they realized that the uh, business owners and the public at large would be unable to attend because of the inclement weather. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, I've had conversations with the uh, mayors in other towns, uh, as well as with uh, uh, freeholder or known. So we're hoping to get this off the ground and we think we're on the right track and we believe that uh, the freeholders, at least the representative Tom Arnone and Amy Fitzgerald, who is the uh, Director of Economic Development for Monmouth County, will help our business owners in this community. Right. Just one more thing that we're looking at, Brian, at trying to get the help our businesses, you know, that coupled with the property tax rebate program, et cetera. So we're committed to having everybody up there running, things running smoothly, businesses thriving, and it helps everybody. Yeah, uh, listen, I, I know Mr. Arnon, I've known Mr. Arnon for a number of years personally, and um, I've spoken to him about the traffic in the tank. Mm -hmm. So you want to help businesses in the tank, mm -hmm. especially in the summertime. Sure. When our population gets a lot more. Traffic. Oh, absolutely. When people come into town and they drive like they want to drive, and I mean, sometimes on Deal Road, the road is backed up from Monmouth Road to Route 18. And all that traffic is either coming off of Route 18 or getting on Route 18. So you should, which I communicated not only with Mr. Arnone, but also with Mary Pat Angelini a few years ago, a while ago, um, about you have to get a different way of getting, we have West Park Avenue, Deal Road, and 66. We have our, our township, 11 and a half square miles. We have to get a different way of getting those cars because you can sit in just, I would say, five out of ten cars that come off of the road are coming off the of Route 18. They're 100% right. We're and going, and I've sat in that, that way. I've sat in that, that traffic too. And the, yeah. the traffic that moves east and west throughout the township yeah. uh, is frequently snarled. But I am happy to report to you because this has bothered you and it's bothered me uh, over a period of years. Is uh, the mayor is already uh, developing some plans, uh, and uh, we believe that we will be able to, at, if not solve the traffic problems with our east and westbound traffic, at least alleviate some of those problems. Uh, yeah. Want to comment on that? Yeah, no, we're looking into a, a, you know, another traffic study, whereas uh, doing something with the jug handles, bringing back left-hand turns, et cetera, something to take the pressure off, pressure off a lot of the jug handles because that helps swell up the intersection. So. We're looking into everything. Nothing's off the table, Brian. We're trying to do everything we can over here. Yeah, well, yeah. well, the jumping are another situation. So I mean, um, but it, it's to me, you should get after the state. And to me, the people coming off of Route 18, going east, that exit should be shut down. Shut down. Because mm -hmm. once you get across, and I'm sure Mrs. Shepard will agree with me. She agreed with me before when I spoke to her. And you get across that overpass. The Route 18. There's no more traffic on Deal Road, right, Mrs. Sheppigan? Um, There's no traffic correct. in your. Is there any traffic when you get up past where you live? Sometimes no. there is, no. but not very, very little. Often. Very little. 
but during the summer, it is, it is, it is West Park Avenue is not quite as bad, but because the road is, the road is, was designed a little bit, but you have businesses on Deal Road, you have a gate that are just, there's just too much there, and, 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 and it's just, uh, it's a bottleneck. And you, have, you know, if, if I, I, I've been in business 42 years in town, I got to wait sometimes 20 minutes to get across Highway 35. It's difficult. And, and, I, I, and, and, I, and I go out of my way to avoid, to avoid that. And it's, and it's, 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 and if you get after the state, years ago when Route 18 stopped there, you lived in the town all your life. You remember Route 18 stopped there? Mm -hmm. Our town sued Route 18, and they collected money. I don't know whether you know that or not. They got to settle because of that traffic. Mm -hmm. And then once the road went through, it caused a lot more traffic. Okay, my, and my other problem is, Ms. Well, I'm going to take this up with Mr. Sister. Sure. Oh, okay. 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 Um, it's a great thing now that you, you're, you're broadcasting these meetings, but I watched it two times. I haven't been to a meeting in a while, but I'm telling you, it's like, it's the quality of this yeah. broadcasting is... I, I, it's ham and egg. No, no. Let me finish. Sure. Let me finish. Sure. And if I was you, you know, I, 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 I recommended this years ago to do this. I even brought it up at a Board of Ed meeting. I'm sure Mr. Long was there. And you know what the person who was the president of the Board of Education, not, I don't know if the, the person was president or not. You know what they said to me? What's we it? don't want to know Jerry Springer is what they said oh, to me. What? So I'm not sure, Mr. I don't know if Mr. Long will remember that or not. Kind of no, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember who the board president was, but I don't recall. But no, I don't know who the president was, but it was, no, it was a board member. It was it's board possible. Member. Sure. And, and they said no, because I, I brought that up because yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, the school system has a much better. Maybe you might have. Maybe maybe you might want the high school children to maybe. come in here and do this. Idea. Either that, mm -hmm. maybe you should put cameras in the ceiling. Sure. And you should. This is another suggestion. You should yeah. have a podium Watch here. It. You should have a podium here with a microphone. So when we come up here, we speak. I watched the first two meetings, and I'm telling you, if I was you or anybody up here, the manager, I would be embarrassed. Let me. So uh, I'm going to be embarrassed because I'm going to. Brian, I'm going to I'm going to stop you right now, just for a second, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Tuesday, the manager, and myself, yeah. and Tom Rue, who runs our camera here, I, I'm, on, I'm on the Ocean 77. We're, we're going yeah. to visit another site that has cameras yeah. mounted, yeah. and they're on. Well, they, they PTZ. have PTZs, and so we are acutely aware of the quality and the resolution and what we have. I mean, the intent here was, of course, to get open and more open and honest government, and I think we've achieved that now to get better resolution, better sound, and make it so everybody can be seen and heard. That's our next step. So we're getting there. We're going it's to a it. work in progress. It's, it's not something. It's not a, right. just a, just give me an opportunity. We recognize it's not a Hollywood production. We know that. We're well aware, we're well aware of that. But the thing is this, we're working on it. So the concerns that you bring, they're legitimate concerns. And believe me when I tell you, because I happen to be in the meeting with the mayor and, uh, and Andrew Brennan, we're, we're well aware of it. And we're trying to make improvements. It may not be a Hollywood version, but we're working hard to make it a, a representative version of our uh, recorded meetings for the township. You spent twenty five thousand dollars to put a sign up out there, yeah. and that's another thing. You, the, the, the dates of the council meetings should be advertised on that sign. I don't see them on there. Yeah. But what I'm getting at is, what, I watched the first two meetings, and I would, if I was you, I would have been embarrassed. No, I, oh, I'm not going to say I'm I was embarrassed. I was happy that we're recording them, and I'm happy that they're people. broadcast. It's like, it's like right, the res we need right. We need to improve it, and we are working. Like I said, we have a meeting Tuesday morning. You're welcome to come if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, you, you call me. Sure, I will. Because I'm on that okay. Ocean 77. Channel. You're invited. I will you, call you. What I'm saying, so. Brian, I'll call you Monday afternoon to remind you, and then you come along with us. How's because, that? Because what I'm saying is, uh, it should be. And then another thing is, you should put uh, something up behind the data. <laughs> well, let me say this. To that end, I ordered the manager also to go ahead and have a new logo made, and it will be. Maybe the flag up there. No, you should put your shirt in. And there's going to be one in the front. So what we, what we have, we're honestly. aware of the same issues have. that you are, because right when you're home and you see this, you notice how barren it is. And I saw it too. And I said, we need our logo. And it's. And I said it to Andrew. What did I say the first meeting? And so he's having a design. We're probably going to incorporate that with something with the schools as well. What happened to our banner? We don't have the banner anymore, but we will have our logo behind me. 
sooner or later. And one in front. I believe when I was in seventh or eighth grade, was when I first asked him, I laid her in the moment. Yeah. And we saw that when we went to school. Yeah. I was in Dallas. 1969. Yeah, we were all yep. school. Mets won the World Series. Yeah. Never forget. <laughs> That's the Nets and the fabulous Jets. That picture was clear. And you're going to find it. It was clear from the moon, is what he said. Okay. Yeah, you're right. One small right. step for man. Amen. One small set for Ocean Township, but we're getting there. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you, brother. Okay. Just to Thank follow you. up on something, Mr. Lepson, we have already under contract for 2015-15 roads that are going to be paid, including right. Mama 3. So we had to stop at the end of this year because of the weather, at the end of 14 because of the weather. But that's already under contract to do, it's about 15 roads in early 2015. Is Pear Street one of them? No. Where my reverend was, is that Okay. Thank you, Brian. Anybody else? Ms. Hudson, just to ask you to come a little closer so you're in frame. Great. Perfect. I'm impressed in the up of Barbara Hudson in the hard spot. In the opposite way, because it's been very quick that you have changed. Yep. With the television, I mean, I'm happy to have the television. Right? So, I mean, quality can improve. And then the resolution. And tonight I thought it was very interesting, too, because uh, you, you, I guess you, you're going to have your uh, announcements before you have your ceremony. I, what I want to do is, yeah, I want to get a council report from each council member so folks know what we're doing. Yes, yeah, so that and let you know that we're here. working so up here. Yeah. That was very good. All right. Thank you. All right, now, I'm very interested in the coming election. Uh, it looks like there's going to be 13 people, and it seems to me it's a good opportunity for to bring out certain kinds of things. So I'm going to expand on what I, I talked about the last sure. time, and it's briefer. <laughs> okay. It mostly germane to local politics, to, hopefully? Or? Well, yes. Lo lo improving, lo uh, substituting local politics for the federal and the failures of the federal okay. government. That's the theme. Right? Uh, we'd like to add some briefer remarks about how local and regional governments may help compensate for the failing of our state and federal governments to act on behalf of our citizens who still pay taxes while too big to fail banks and other corporate monopolies avoid them. For instance, Burlington, Vermont is supplied 100% of its electricity from renewable sources such as wind, water, and biomass that is part of a broader movement that includes a statewide goal of getting 90% of Vermont's energy from renewable resources by 2050, including electricity, heating, and transportation. There is, in fact, a growing movement across the country as governments and businesses seek to liberate themselves from using power. Diane Moss, the founding director of the Southern California-based Renewable 100 Policy Institute, said she wasn't sure if any communities as large as Burlington have reached 100%, but that many are working on it. Nearly 1,000 businesses, both large and small, and many communities have also committed 100%. Then there is Greensburg, Kansas, who was wiped out by a 2007 tornado, rebuilt with energy efficiency in mind. Another article about Iowa municipalities reported that Lawrence has been put on the map thanks to its citywide municipal cable and broadband service. While there are some 20 states, not including New Jersey, that make it illegal to create a broadband service, and is owned by the public due to legislation pushed by corporations such as Comcast and AT&T. The FCC is about to ban that ban. Lauren, along with 18 other towns in Iowa, have created municipal systems, and 133 municipalities or more serve 3 million people, according to a report by the Institute for Local Self-Reliance in Minneapolis. A further note about all this is that if municipal, municipal or regional governments began to initiate needed projects, we might hope to free up more of our congressional representatives to take part in our causes, as well as include our local and regional businesses and corporations in such adventures, like for instance, the New Jersey Natural Gas Company that I used to work for, that proudly uh, boasts use of solar. Major economic problems have to do with companies conglomerating and monopolizing, making obvious small business, in contrast, creative business. On the subject of banking, probably our most corrupted industry, 
People like Ellen Brown keep us informed about such things as the changing laws of our now global international governments wanting to become a one world government, allowing <coughs> its behemoth banks in the event of their likely failure, a process called bail-in. They can't have bail-outs anymore, all right, uh, to cover their losses by expropriating depositors' funds and converting them to what may be worthless bonds. Ms. Brown points to the success of the State Bank of North Carolina, uh, Dakota as an example of our extracting ourselves from such outcomes. Now, to conclude, while we do we not expect our local government and representatives to jump into any such adventure, we think at least such possibilities should be part of the discussions of council candidates. And to that point, we ought to have many debates in the forthcoming months, not only that of the ever faithful, <coughs> dependable, and astute League of Women Voters. Many organizations could hold them, such as the very active Italian American Club and business groups, along with other citizen and religious groups. Additional debates, with some having more open forums, would allow candidates and residents to confront each other more directly, to get to know, as they ought to, what they have and are to contribute to the township. Great, thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Hudson, to the point of sustainable energy, and it's funny that you brought that up, because no, it's part of the budget process. We, we just had this discussion. And we aren't ready to undertake a law, any large projects. But we have noticed that some of our sustainable projects are really starting to pay off. Um, and we, we're going to continue with um, those efficiencies, mainly lighting and heating controls. And also, I don't know if you know this, but we buy our electricity from um, a conglomerate of 200 municipalities together. And part of that contract is a percentage of that electricity has to come from sustainable sources. So the, uh, and it's not a large percentage, I think it's 7%, I don't remember off him, but, but they have to guarantee us that, that the electricity that they're generating comes from solar and from wind yeah. and yes, from hydro. Um, so, you know, we are, we, we do have that conversation. Right. You may not hear it here on the dais, but we do have that conversation and we are aware of it. Right. Great. And um, so you, were, you were talking about the regional meeting. I would assume that it would be more effective if we're regional. Mm -hmm. right? and, and Always, local right, local you have more power than many. Yeah. It, it, just to add on to what uh, Deputy Mayor Garfold has but we additionally were ourselves and uh, uh, Andrew Brennan had a meeting last week with folks in town, or a person that has property, we're even looking into a small solar farm if it's big enough. So we're always looking ahead at that, right. and I'm always on top of our JCP and our representative as far as uh, LED lighting, and that's something that will probably RFP this year. The LED, all of our buildings in our outside areas. So I think it's going to be a necessity. Yeah. I think we're going to have right. to do it. Right. And um, I just read an article that alternative energy throughout the world is now much greater than nuclear. The nuclear. nuclear yeah. 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 Great. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Mr. Hudson. This is our closer, as everybody knows. This signifies the end of the do like the Mariano sauce? Hey, Mariano. Yes. 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 Tuesday night and it wasn't there. And I looked at it on Wednesday night and it wasn't there. I looked at it this afternoon and it wasn't there. But apparently it's there now, which is great. We were trying to work with got it up a little bit before four. We were working with the vendor to try to get it to be perfect, but we well, figured we put up whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. uh, but it would be very helpful if the um, if most of it came out uh, on Wednesday. It, it, it will be. We're getting there, like you said. A couple of days before, so people can look at it. Like our clerk said, he's trying it's to nice make sure. It's nice to know that it's there, so you can refer to it sure. later and refer to it just before the meeting. Part of the problem we're having, and that we're going to control that now, is he gets the information late. Yeah. He's, we're trying to control where folks get, get your items in to us as early as possible so there's no changes last minute. And Vincent can get them up there on time and you yeah. can read them at home 
before you come out. So by the next meeting, we should have that portion of it worked out as well. You should okay. be able to see well, it by um, Wednesday. I think the people all will be willing to give you credit for putting on what you can. And uh, if you have something to add at the day of the meeting, uh, you can add it later and save it and announce at the beginning of the meeting that uh, uh, you're adding item two and three or four on the agenda. Sure. Uh, do that. The other thing is, uh, I assume Mr. Arbus can uh, contradict me if he wishes. That there's no nothing to report on. Go on stop and shop. There is something. Ah. Uh -huh. Nothing has happened. <laughs> okay. no, we have had no change. There's no uh, uh, further litigation issue at this time. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Before I make a motion to adjourn, I just want to give folks out there who may live in the Wanamassa area a bridge report. As you know, the Sunset Avenue Bridge did close on January 29th, and it will be closed right on through March of 2016, providing everything goes well. Um, I'll personally be making Friday night uh, afternoon visits to Mark, the supervisor down there who's working the construction, and I'll get reports from him as far as progress and a forecast. Additionally, on Sunday afternoons, myself and another council member will be walking around going to the neighbors in and around the neighborhoods in the areas to see how they're coping with the construction and see if there's any concerns we can address and take those back to the contractor as well. So we're going to kind of monitor this on a weekly basis. If anybody has any questions, as always, on my Facebook page is my phone number. We're reachable. We're all here for you. If you see one of the council members on the road, just go on up to them and ask them for any help that you may need. And coffee with the mayor. And they'll be sure. glad. And we, of course, my coffee with the mayor sessions are going great. Been very busy. They're Monday afternoons, 1 to 4, and Friday afternoons on 1 to 4. And tomorrow I have a visit from the governor's office at 1230. Uh, his representative's coming down. But with that, uh, don't forget to watch us. Why? Why? Uh, the question was, why is someone from the governor's office? They had called me and asked if they can come down and have a discussion. I said, sure. You don't know it? Well, we'll find out tomorrow. That should be our question next week. You're welcome, too. Uh, with that, don't forget to see us on uh, Channel 77 for Optum and Channel 22 for Files. Thank you, Nolan. Good night. Have a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Deputy Mayor Garofalo. Yes. Council Members Long. Yes. Jeffrey. Yes.